as he sees you through some beautiful, crazy seasons in your life, and he's shown himself beautiful. Amen. Amen. It's so good. Praise the Lord. Group three in the house. Why don't we thank the Lord for being in his house this afternoon? And we also pray for all of you who have turned your home into a church. We're praying that soon things will change, that we won't have these divisions, but we will all be united in the house of God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Why don't we just one more time just lift up our hands and thank the Lord for all that he's done. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your beauty. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask that you would open in your Bibles to Ephesians 6 and 10. And we're going to read down to the 12th verse. Ephesians 6 and 10. And we're going to read down to the, to the 12th verse. Amen. Why don't we thank God for Bishop, First Lady, Lady Anna, pastoral staff. I think somebody in the house can say, thank you, Jesus, for healing. Amen. A special guest this evening. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, for a healing God. Amen. Thank God for Brother Felix being in the house this evening. Amen. I'm sure it feels so good to be in the house, my brother. The scripture reads, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your anointing. We pray that your will would be done in us. We magnify you. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you have given. We pray over the remainder of this service. We pray that you would anoint this word. We come against any distraction, against any hindrance. Lord, we come before you believing that your will would be done. Strengthen us. Speak to us. Help us, Lord. Heal us. Bless us, Father. Let us receive the miracles that are needed in our life. In the precious name of Jesus, everybody say Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. The title that the Lord has given me this evening just to talk to you on is Closer Than You Think. Closer Than You Think. The combat for which we are prepared to be prepared for, it is not against Ordinary human enemies. I'm going to say that part again. The combat for which we are to be prepared for is not against ordinary human enemies. It is not against mere flesh and blood, nor simply against our own corrupt natures. But it is against several ranks of devils who have a government which they exercise in this world. If you think the enemy is indiligent, you're wrong. If you think the enemy takes time off, you're wrong. If you think the enemy doesn't study you, you're wrong. There is a real enemy that is warring against our very soul. And we have to make sure that we are diligent in these last days and to understand what and who is working against the church of the living God. This is why you are encouraged to worship, encouraged to praise. I know that we at this point have masks on our faces, but you don't have mitts on your hands and you can still give God a full clap 100% offering unto the Lord. I, I know that we're going through a strenuous time, a difficult season, but if you could simply find what it takes um, to, to praise God through whatever you're going through, I think that you're going to find victory. I think you're going to find a blessing. I think you're going to find your place and know where the enemy is and how he is coming against you in these last days. 
Jacob's life is in danger from his older brother. He just sold an inheritance that wasn't initially his. Jacob knows that eventually his brother is going to catch up with him. He is going to kill him. That's what he told his mother. And he also understands that he is no match for his stronger, older brother. I want to tell you that when you are outmatched, you must and you've got to appeal to a higher source. You need to call on someone who is mightier than your current enemy. He was worried about his life, yet he found that there was somebody who was greater that could help him. How many of you have been in that place in your life when you're outmatched and the enemy is stronger than you at that moment and you've got to find somebody or something that is stronger, somebody who could help you in a time of trouble. My God, in these last days when we've been weak and when we've been frail, we know who to call on. That's why we call the name of our God, the name above every name, Jesus, help me out because there are some forces that have come against my life. There have some been some demonic spiritual things that have come against my house. Jesus, I'm going to call upon you to help me. Jesus, give me the authority. Holy Ghost, help me. Because right now it seems like I'm surrounded. And if I could only get just a little bit of strength from you, Jesus, I believe everything's going to be all right. He was outmatched. Yet I believe... And the Bible doesn't record this, but I believe that Jacob began to pray and to call out unto God. And as he called out to God, I believe that he was saying, Lord, you know what's happening in my life. And I understand that I have been, a, 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 you know, I have lied and, and I have manipulated myself into a blessing. But if you simply could spare my life, I'll change things around. The Bible says that all of a sudden an angel shows up. I don't think it was a coincidence, but the scripture abruptly takes us into the passage where there is an, a divine appointment with Jacob. The Bible tells us that a wrestling match broke out. The scripture never described really what started it. I believe him calling out on God started it all. But it takes the narrative once the match was already on. I don't believe that the angel was sent to destroy Jacob, but I believe the angel was sent to test him. The angel's strength is not to be compared with a human. So if he was sent to destroy him, he would have destroyed him. But he was sent, I believe, to test him and to see where he was at in his life. I believe that we have entered into a place where we are going to see manifestations of God and, and, and the power and presence of God in ways that we have never seen it before, knowing that we are living in the last days. Uh, but you're going to have to have a tenacity and you're going to have to have a desire to say, not only do I want you to show up, God, and not only am I calling on you for help, but God, I need you to take me through this season. I'm not not going to be silent in this season and Lord when you show up when your presence is near God that I would entertain you the way that you want me to if you want me to praise I'm gonna praise if you want me to worship I'm gonna worship if you want me to wrestle I'm gonna wrestle if you want me to fight I'm gonna fight but God whatever you want me to do let me understand what your will and your directions is when you show up in my life angel was much stronger than him yet I don't believe the angel was sent to destroy him because Hosea tells us that the angel prevailed not against him it records that the angel did not win you might have to ask yourself this question what does that mean this is what it means the test of fatigue did not prevail the angel shows up and they begin to wrestle and as they are wrestling the one thing that the angel is looking for is if this person 
is willing to endure this match, if this person is willing to not let go, if this person is willing to hold on, how many times have you been in the midnight experience where you feel like throwing in the towel? It seems like the enemy wants to take your head off, but yet you find yourself talking to God and you find yourself realizing, God, I have a connection with you. I've got your attention in my prayer closet. Lord, I need you to help me right now. I have a brother. I have a sister in need. I have a family that is going through. Father, if you could just be there on our behalf, give me the strength not to quit right now, not to quit praying, not to quit having faith, not to quit praising, not to quit worshiping. To not become weary and well-doing. My God, if there was ever a season to quit, it probably was right now. If there was a season to throw in the towel, it probably is right now. Not only the church is going through things, but the world will tell you this has been the roughest season of my life. But I'm so thankful for the hope in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm so thankful for the blood that cleanses us, the water that washes us, the spirit that empowers us. Because in these last days, we're going to see miracles. We're going to see the miraculous. We're going to see blessings. We're going to see healings. We're going to see our families put together, our prayers answered. We're going to see the mighty power of God. And we have to speak faith and speak life in these last days because it seems like all the elements are going against the, the, the authority of the church of the living God. I believe what happened was the angel came to see whether or not he would make it through the night. The angel could have destroyed him, but he was just there to see if he would not throw in the towel. The divine mission seems to be one. This divine appointment seems to be one of endurance of who will quit first. I want to tell you this, that the angel, the angel came with a blessing and it was time stamped with a release point. Mm, I'm going to say that again. It was time stamped with a release point. If Jacob held on through the night, the morning would bring about a power that would help him with God and with people. And it would bring about a name change that would get him over his old character. Oh, I'm here to tell somebody that there is a blessing that has a release point. But you've got to hold on through the midnight hour. Ah, you've got to hold on. You can't let go. Jacob said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. I'm not letting go to the point that the angel had to smite the hollow or the, his thigh so that he was lame from that point on. But I'm here to tell you that Jacob didn't quit. Even though he was named as a liar, even though he was a manipulator, even though he was a cheat, yet he knew how to not let go. So don't let your failures don't let your frailties, don't let your weakness get in the way of the a blessing that God has appointed for you in your life. God has a blessing with your name on it, but you have to be in the right position to receive it. All Jacob had to do was not let go. How many blessings I've received in my life simply by not letting go? It wasn't because I was strong or swift or wise. It was because I just had a death grip on God and said, Lord, I'm not letting go until you bless me. And because of that, I've seen things in my life that I never thought I would see. I'm here to encourage somebody that God has sent the help that you need. But you have to respond correctly. You have to be where God wants you to be. Jacob's wrestling represents a spiritual struggle that today is only engaged through a prayerful lifestyle. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. Prayer 
is to have isolated moments with God in private that continue throughout a lifestyle publicly as you keep them at the forefront of your mind. Praying without ceasing is carrying your prayer further than just the altar. It may begin at the altar, but what starts here goes with you throughout the day. And when you know how to pray, and when you have that connection and relationship with God, I'm here to tell you something. That prayer is going to break out into worship. <laughs> that prayer is going to break out into worship. Prayer, a pray, excuse me, throughout the rest of the day. That prayer is going to break out into a word of faith, a word of life and not death. You're going to bless somebody and not curse somebody. Why? Because you've been at the altar and you're learning how to pray without ceasing. You come into the house of God not needing something, but ready to give something. Why? Because you've already started prayer somewhere else. You come to this place to help supercharge somebody. You're not here just dragging and pulling out somebody else's strength, but you've come prayed up and you're ready to praise and worship God because you're connected with your God to the point that there is an overflow in your life. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, Jacob wrestled against an angel of God face to face and received a blessing. He received a transformation. But the apostle here is warning us mm, of angels, of principalities, of powers, of rulers and spiritual wickedness that are present to impose a wickedness that we must be careful of. There are good angels and there are bad angels. The scripture says that we wrestle against these forces. That we wrestle against these forces. These angels and principalities, they are a class of a spiritual beings, they are different ranks or types of evil spiritual beings. They're different orders of angels. They have a, a level of power and superiority. And we have to realize that these evil powers and principalities are evil spirits that are trying to influence us through the works of the flesh. Galatians 5 and 19 tells us, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, as we talk about wrestling, wrestling speaks of hand-to-hand -hand combat, a battle that is close, a battle that is personal, a battle that is one-on-one. -on -one. one thing the Lord wants me to tell you that he breathed into my spirit is that these evil forces are closer than you could ever think. When the Bible says to wrestle with them, that means it's close, that you're dealing with these evil spirits and forces like a wrestling match, like Jacob was wrestling with the angel of God. And what the Lord is saying is that there is spiritual forces that are at work, good and bad, 
that are coming against us. And it's not a distant fight. It's not somebody else's fight, but it is our own personal fight. One thing I realized about wrestling, and I wrestled when I was in high school, is that it's a close personal thing. It's an issue of strength, but most of all, it's an issue of endurance and tactics. It's about one opponent taking another one and submitting them. And that's what the enemy wants to do with you. These evil angels, these evil principalities, these wicked things in high places have come against our lives. And you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to wear you out. If they had the power to take you out right now, they would take you out. But God obviously has given you some type of authority and power. God has obviously given you some type of protection. There must be a special name that is pronounced and written over your life. There must be a special blood that's covering your entire body. There must be a word that's hidden down deep in your heart. There must be a praise and worship and the glory of God in your life that's telling the death angel to stay back. The works of flesh are not going to inhabit my life. I'm not going to practice adultery, fornication, or homosexuality, or any of these things, but I'm going to walk in the holiness of God. I'm going to walk in the righteousness of God. I'm going to boldly come before the throne of grace. Why? Because I'm a child of the King, and He's kept me alive this long. He's seen me through hell and high water. He's seen me through sickness. I'm still standing today by the grace of God. Sometimes we don't understand spiritually what's happening to us or, or, or against us. Young people, I want you to know there are some nasty de de demons. I can't even say the word right. Demons, devils that have come against you or a combination of the two that are trying to destroy your soul, that are trying to take you out. But the devil is a liar. Our young people are going to rise up. Our young people are going to understand that that's not right and that's not right. I'm not going to play into that bad attitude. I'm not going to play into that spirit I'm gonna learn to praise and worship I'm gonna learn to magnify my God and I'm gonna keep these enemies at bay by the way I want I want to thank God for our Wednesday band that's showing up they have been coming on Thursday nights they've been coming two hours before service and I'm so thankful that we even got some young people in there, some young bucks in the group that are learning to be warriors. And I'm so thankful for them. God bless our Wednesday group. Yeah. Ephesians 6 and 13 tells us to put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand the evil. It says to stand having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, to take the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And verse 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Can I tell you this? That prayer activates your armor. When you go into your prayer closet and you pray for your specific needs, all of a sudden you put on that whole armor of God and then you begin to wrestle with these forces, these works of flesh that are trying to get into our spirit, these deviant demons that are coming against us. That's why in these last days we need to pray. Church, we need to pray like never before. We need to get down. Get in position. Get ready for the enemy because there are some principalities. There are some powers. There are some rulers and wickedness that have aimed their targets at us. But yet we will pray. We will pray and not cease. We will wrestle. We will continue to fight against the enemy. And God is going to give us the victory in the name of Jesus. God is going to spare our families whole. God is going to touch our minds. He's going to allow us to break chains that are trying to keep us down. But if only we understand that it's through prayer. My God, it's through prayer. 
The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. My God, I feel some righteous heaven prayer that's in this place right now. I feel that there's some of you mothers and fathers that are praying for your children. I feel there's some young people in this place that are crying out to God. My God, who's to say that your angel may not show up with a blessing for you? Break every form of discouragement and depression in the name of Jesus. My God, just as know as we have divine appointments from God, with God, we also have to understand that there is an enemy that is closer than you think. When we play around with a language that's not godly or see things that are ungodly, we open up windows and we open up places that, that usher in these principalities that render us weak. I'm here to tell you there are some powerful forces that want to destroy your soul. There is a spirit of pornography. There is a spirit of fornication that is coming against us. But we're going to have to pray like never before. We're going to have to band together. You're going to have to lean on your brother and sister when, when, when you need to. But this day we're going to have to declare that my God. God, you're closer than any demon. You're closer than any devil. And I'm going to claim the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. When you pray, all of a sudden your armor starts to snap into place. My God. The sword of the spirit, <laughs> the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your loins are girt with truth. All of a sudden, you're a, a different character. You're a different creature. There's something different about you. Your name is no longer Jacob, but it is Israel. And now you have power with God. Now you have power with man. Now there's a change in your life. You, can't, you don't have to be addicted to these things that come against you. Why? Because you've got power now. You've got power now. I said, you've got power now. My God, my God. We're going to have to operate in a realm of faith that we've never operated before. You're going to have to see things as though they are not. You're going to have to see with supernatural eyes. Even though you can't see it, you're going to have to believe it. I don't know if things are going to get better, but I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak power and authority. I don't know if this situation is going to change or that problem is going to go away, but we're going to have to speak life. Why? Because there are demonic forces that are at work. They're watching every text. They're watching every scroll on your social media. They're watching how you communicate with your friends and with your family. They're watching your attitude and they're looking for an opportunity to slip into your life and catch you off guard. The scripture says that we wrestle. We wrestle against these things. That means that they are present. It doesn't say that we look at them from afar. It doesn't say that it's a distant battle coming in 25 years. It says you're wrestling hand to hand with these principalities. And until we have that faith, the ability to praise and worship, my God, that is supercharged from a prayerful, prayerful encounter with God. Don't be too busy right now. Man, we are fighting against this distracting spirit that doesn't allow us to pray, that doesn't allow us to read our Bibles. It's social media, it's television, it's news, it's your friends, it's your... Man, sometimes we got to get that stuff and push it away and say, God, I need to spend some time with you because I'm distracted. I don't like my attitude right now. I don't like the things that I'm thinking. It feels like there are demons that are coming against me. But God, you're just a prayer away. You're just a worship away. You're just a praise away. You're just a lifted hands away, God, from coming through and giving me the victory. My God, my God, to be aware of these things, to be warned of these things, my God, we're getting ready for the last days. We're in the last days and we're getting ready for God 
to come back home. I'm going to ask that you would stand. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that he's so beautiful? How many of you believe that he's so beautiful? Hallelujah. I'm thankful that we serve a beautiful God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that we serve a beautiful God. That as the angels are sent, they can only go so far. If it's an evil angel, they have to have God's permission. And when he sends his angels to minister to us, our responsibility is to hold on and not let go. There's a blessing that's coming if we just hold on. There's a healing that's coming if we just hold on. There's a blessed hope and assurance that's coming if we just hold on. Past discouragement, past the circumstances, past how you're feeling in your body or what is attacking your mind. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you would simply lift up your voice right now. If we could simply sing that song. Hallelujah. You're so beautiful, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify you. Go ahead and pray right where you're at. That's your altar call. Jesus. Oh, us to dwell, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Lord, we ask for strength right now. Thank you for giving us power over these forces, Jesus.